Napoleon is now out. The newest Ridley Scott film starring Joaquin Phoenix. And there is, how do you like my yeah. hat? Yeah, it's a nice hat. There's my hat. <laughs> uh, you look <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Vanessa Kirby, who's super hot right now. Uh, she's got a lot going on. Uh, came out in theaters. Now, they showed us all the way back in April at CinemaCon. They showed us this like 10-minute sequence of this battle that takes place on a frozen lake. And it was jaw-dropping. It looked so good. So I was a little bit surprised when early reactions and reviews started to come out about Napoleon, and they quite frankly sound a little bit lukewarm. Well, it was with great interest that I went out finally yesterday to watch Napoleon for myself. It's not a good movie. I, I, it's, it's not good. Now, everything is subjective. It's all up to every, movies or art. Art hits us all in different and unique ways. I'm sure there are some people, you know, the critics are roughly split on Napoleon. Um, so there are critics, you know, who I respect that liked it. This is a badly made movie. And, and I'm going to tell you why I, I had such problems with it. Now, first of all, visually, it's beautiful. The cinematography of the movie is, and I'm sure you could tell this from the trailers and everything, are really artistically gorgeous. Quite breathtaking to look at. A huge amount of respect for that. Also, the battle scenes felt raw and visceral and, and so well shot. It, it just, it really did. It had that, you know, the scenes of the battles felt, and I know this is an overused word, epic. Really did. The, the, the big battle scenes felt big. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. Joaquin Phoenix is Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Vanessa Kirby delivers a, a great performance. But this is a unfocused, random, zero buildup with moderate payoff mess of a movie. And, and I don't like to review a movie by comparing it to another, but just so you understand what I'm trying to say about it, I want to use, say, Braveheart as an example. You know, before a single fight happens in Braveheart, the movie spends time giving us emotional anchors to the stakes of the battle coming ahead, why it's dramatically important, understanding the mindset of, what was Braveheart's real name again in the movie? I keep forgetting. William Wallace. Yeah, William Wallace. Will William Wallace. You can shoot lightning from his arse. Right. <laughs> like understanding why this was a passionate thing for William Wallace, why this is all. And because I've always said on this show, action without narrative purpose is just visual noise. Right. You guys have heard me say that a million times. Action without narrative purpose is visual noise. Then every time in Braveheart, Braveheart took the battlefield, there was narrative purpose going on. I'm without giving away spoilers. I'm going to give you an example. And this one example represents the entire messiness of the movie. There's a scene in the movie where the Emperor Napoleon is sitting down with a Russian prince, the, the leader of Russia, and they're having this nice drink together and they're talking about their mutual hatred of Britain and how they're going to be brothers and all this kind of stuff, right? Then the movie cuts from that to a completely unrelated scene, that something is do something completely different. And then the very next scene is Napoleon marching to war, narrating a letter, my dearest Josephine. The Russian dude stabbed me in the back. I'm going off to conquer him right now. And you're like, wait, what? You, we just saw a scene with you guys having drinks. Something else happened that was unrelated. And all of a sudden now you're marching off to war. And why should I care? Why, why? There's no emotional hook. I, I like this is, and that's the whole movie. The whole movie is random. And I never felt like they were telling the story of Napoleon. I felt like they were showing us a best of hits list. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like vignettes. Yeah, it just felt like you were watching these random scenes picked for no particular reason. And then I think it was Rupert Everett shows up at the end. It's like, oh, wait a minute. So is Rupert Everett now supposed to be the big bad guy? He literally just showed up out of nowhere and has this one scene. And then all of a sudden he's the big bad guy and then the movie's over. It was just, and, and here's, it's supposed to be about the great love story of Napoleon and Josephine. Napoleon meets Josephine. Hello. Next scene, I cannot live without you. <laughs> like, it's just, you never <laughs> felt it. It never grew. It never became organic. 
going back to the comparison to Braveheart, when William meets the girl he falls in love with at the movie, very, very short period of time, but in a very short period of time, they managed to let us feel William Wallace falling in love with her. And you felt the passion. And so when she's I'm falling in love with her right now. I know. And so when she's killed in the movie, it wasn't a random thing that happened in the movie. You were like, William's going to fuck some fools up because yeah. you felt it, right? You were emotionally brought into it. Napoleon does none of that. None of it. That even when some of these, what should have been big emotional events in the life of Napoleon, they rang hollow because nothing was ever narratively done. It was just one random scene to the next random scene to the next random scene, beautifully shot. But I got to tell you, Rob, I... I walked out, I did not hate the movie, but I walked out very disappointed. I don't think this was a good movie. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, DraftKings. There's so much to be thankful for. Family, friends, food, and NFL football all week long. DraftKings Sportsbook is keeping your Thanksgiving week full of action. New customers can bet just five bucks on the NFL action to score 150 instantly in bonus bets. No matter your appetite, there's something for you. Money lines, parlays, props, live bets, and so much more. You name it, they've got it. And it's a big Thanksgiving week. Detroit Lions are favored over the Green Bay Packers. The Dallas Cowboys are favorite over Washington. Who will you pick? So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code CAMPIA. New customers can bet five on the NFL Thanksgiving action to score 150 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL with the code CAMPIA. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. Please play responsibly. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, must be 21 or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms. Now, you loved what you saw at CinemaCon, just like I did. I did. Where's your expectations been? Well, they were pretty high. I mean, you know, it's it, really Scott's an interesting filmmaker. He's somebody I've always admired all the way back to his first feature, The Duelists, that he made before, which is another period piece like this. It takes place in the Napoleonic era. But, you know, John, a lot of his historical movies, like when I saw Kingdom of Heaven in the theater, I didn't like it. But then they released it on video, and it was an hour longer. Yeah, the director's cut. The director's yeah. cut. It was like yeah. a different movie. Yeah. And 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 I feel like, and he's done this. He has so many different cuts. I mean, many of his movies have so many different cuts. Even The Counselor, which I'm a big Counselor supporter, uh, there's a long version of that. And I, I'm always wary of his historical efforts because I feel like, the real movie I'm going to see later when it's an hour longer and released on video and streaming. So and this was not a short movie, by the way. Right, I this know. This was not a short movie. I know. And, and when it you, felt longer than it was. But when you say things like, and this, I, I believe you, when you say things like there's this scene where I'm meeting with the Russian, he's going to be my brother, and then a scene later, or a scene and a half later or something, then we're going to war, and you're like, I, how did that happen? And then you go see the longer version, there's like five scenes that were there that explain what happened. So it, it, I'm always wary of Ridley Scott's period pieces for this reason. I'm still going to go see it because, like you said, it's for me, it's worth it just watching the staging. It's visually beautiful. You know, I, mean, I, I can't think take probably that Pietro is Scalia is beautiful. editing his film, too. I think he edited this one, but I just like watching the man's editorial work as well. So to me, it's worth seeing. I want to see it on the big screen. But I'm disappointed hearing what you said about it. You know, and, and it adds to my disappointment because we talk. Look, let, let's be clear. Ridley Scott is a first ballad Hall of Famer, okay? Ridley Scott's legacy as one of the great directors that we've had is firmly secure, no problem, right? But this kind of came up the other day. You take out The Martian, which was wonderful. I love The Martian. I do too. It's, it's a, especially the longer version of that. Yeah, yeah. but like how many movie. years had passed before The Martian that had come out before since Ridley Scott had a really good film and what have we had lately we've had the house of Gucci which a lot of people didn't like we had the last duel which I thought was ultimately disappointing now we've got this Napoleon I I hate saying it I I, I just think Ridley Scott's lost his edge 
I, I just don't feel like he's got it anymore. Uh, then again, then you then all of a sudden out of nowhere comes a movie like The Martian. But how many? How long ago was The Martian? Now it feels like it was last year, 2015. Yeah, it was eight years ago. Oh my god! That By the way, I just got a great six scale figure. Oh, you of Matt Damon's character. <laughs> I want it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today, so it'll be there when you need it.